welcome to Anything is Possible. My name is Tamara and um, I live at Lake Chapala in Jalisco, Mexico. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Olenia, the, uh, Mexico's upcoming electric car. Um, it's something that I'm really interested in. I thought I would just sort of go through everything that seems to be known at this point um, it is in the design phase and so and kind of at the preliminary phases of um, development um, before production actually starts so um, things are constantly changing um, there isn't a whole lot of real current information the last thing that comes out on their web page is actually um, at the end of March so um, here it is the middle of June so they're busy working so I've been away for two months uh, actually and the last video I did was uh, in Mazamitla where I was staying at the time and then I moved to Tapalpa for a while um, to escape the heat and dust and smoke and stuff that happens here for a couple of months every year um, can't say that uh, it's my favorite time of year there and so it was nice to escape to the mountains and today you can see my garden you might be able to hear it raining in the background because it's really raining been raining pretty hard off and on and a lot of weeds came up while I was away uh, I had some automatic sprinklers going and a neighbor watching the yard so it was uh, I've got a lot of work to do out there but it still looks beautiful with all the blooms going and rain dripping from the eaves. Anyway, I went over a little bit of this in the last video that I did, um, but Olenia is Nawal, and it means to move. It's intended to be a very affordable car, and it's going to be uh, all electric, and everything is made, the parts will all be made and assembled, everything will be made here in Mexico. It's a goal of Claudia Scheinbaum, our president. Um, she actually has a PhD in uh, electrical engineering. And in 1995, she participated in a research program documenting the link between fossil fuels and climate change. So she's really motivated to move Mexico into more using renewable resources and um, and getting away from using petroleum products. There is a lot of misinformation and some naysaying going on about Olenia. And I think um, it's mostly because people just don't have all the information. Um, they seem to think that, you know, the government has not funded it enough. Well, it's a, it's a joint effort. It's between education and private industry and the government. The best place to go to get information is either to go to the Auto C. Olinia website um, or um, just go to the Mexican government website. Every now and then there's a pr press release, usually from Claudia Scheinbaum, um, about the car, a little update. So the big goals um, of the Olenia is there's going to be three designs that all share the same chassis. Um, two will be subcompact vehicles and um, there will be an electric truck um, for transporting goods. So originally Claudia Scheinbaum kind of considered coming up with an electric motorcycle, but you know, there's just so many accidents and fatalities with motorcycles. Um, she decided that what she wanted was um, a vehicle that was safer um, and more comfortable than motorcycles for the general population. So um, they will be priced very competitively. They have zero emissions and they will be silent. So the big goal is to have the prototype ready in 2026 next year for the World Cup, which is going to be held in Mexico City and uh, mass production will start in 2028 but at the at the world cup they're planning to transport um, people that come to the world cup you know it'll be used for transporting attendees at the world cup 
So it's going to be a very attractive alternative to any of the Chinese electric vehicles that are available here. Now, there's, there's quite a lot of Chinese vehicles, both electric and non-electric, here in Mexico. So one thing um, that I have to emphasize is that Mexico really knows how to produce vehicles. They produce auto parts for much of the U.S. and the rest of the world, and they assemble vehicles here. So Mexico definitely knows how to create vehicles. It makes sense that Mexico would be able to create something and, and produce it here, and why not electric? It'll benefit a lot of Mexicans and create a lot of new jobs here. So one of the goals um, is to have an extremely safe vehicle here. And so this new design uh, of the Olinia, it must comply with all the official Mexican standards. So at a minimum, it has to have ABS brakes and airbags with um, all three of the models. And it, currently, um, the Chinese imports don't necessarily comply with this. Design and production. Um, the coordinator of the project is Roberto Capuano Trip. And um, he is the Sustainable Development Project for the State of Mexico, Hidalgo, and Mexico City. And the technical coordinator is Rafael Garayoa Guajardo. Now, those two are the heads of the Olenia project. And they have enlisted um, two of the very best technical technological universities in Mexico. Their best experts are devoted 100% of the time to developing the Olenia, um, and they're experts in automotive and electric mobility. The National Polytechnic Institute and the National Technological Institute of Mexico will be in charge of the technological development of Olenia. So using technology from academia and research, it is part of a public-private partnership with some of the profits made from the car will be going back into science and education. So I want to, um, again, emphasize that any of the concept cars that you see, um, pictures of what the Alenia will look like and all, it's really, at this point, those are usually AI-generated or artist concepts. Uh, it really has nothing to do with what the car will probably end up looking, especially some of them I've seen are quite large, and um, there's no way that um, this car is going to be large. And um, I think they'll probably get someone to design it where it will be very cute. So there will be models. Um, there's a small two-seat vehicle um, for individual transport and local de deliveries, like meal deliveries, like Traite here. Um, or, and there's also a second vehicle on the same chassis, but they'll design it so it's more of a taxi type vehicle. So for like Ubers, um, or if you've been overseas, it's what they call tuk-tuks, you know, um, only this won't be a motorcycle, but it'll be for transporting a couple of people. Um, and then the other will be a utility truck for small businesses making home deliveries, so. AI is being used into design to optimize energy efficiency, aerodynamics, and safety, as well as in operational aspects of the vehicle and navigation, real-time decision-making, and accident avoidance. So this is a really good application of AI. So the car is designed for urban use, I have to say. It's not for rural use or country roads or driving on unpaved back roads. So as I said before, there will be um, one platform, one chassis for all three vehicles. Um, the powertrain, the engine, and the battery will be the same for all three of them. Um, and the body will just change. The cars will be manufactured in Puebla and in Sonora in Mexico. And the Center for Innovation and industrial design is located in the city of Puebla, and the Center for High-Level Human Resources, Serhan, is located nearby in San Jose, Chiapa. Zacua's Mexican company facilities are near there too. 
Zaqua is uh, actually an existing 100% um, electric vehicle being produced here in Mexico. Um, it also is a two-seat vehicle, um, but they are made to order. They are not production vehicles, and they are not cheap. They sell for over 30,000 U.S. dollars. So they're very cute, and they're electric, and they're made in Mexico, but they don't meet the goal of actually um, being very affordable for the masses to be able to have a way to get around. So 25 million pesos has been allocated to the two uh, institutes by the Mexican government, and that's what they've invested in the project, 25 million pesos. And, um, but there are also private investors in the company, and, um, and a lot of other companies are kind of anxious to, you know, participate in all of this. They are, um, it's an exciting project, and a lot of, a lot of companies want to be a part of it. Alinea is teaming with the automotive cluster of Nuevo Leon, um, who has a long-standing reputation in innovation leading with leading manufacturers in four continents, and they have expertise in mechanical, electrical, electronic, and advanced manufacturing um, supported with CAD CAE software tools. Sorry about this. The, gotten into fly season here. <laughs> so now I wanted to talk a little about the infrastructure uh, to support electric vehicles, which is a big question that always seems to come up. The development of widely available charging stations and maintenance facilities still need to accompany the production of electric vehicles. Um, and they aren't widely available throughout Mexico, although there are quite a few. I'm showing the map that is on the Zacua website um, with, the, with the current charging stations. In Guadalajara, there are 117 charging stations. In Mexico City, there are 280. Um, and there is even one in Ajijic at the Hotel Hacienda del Lago. If you look on Google Maps and you put in uh, electric vehicle charging stations, it will come up with also um, locations where you could charge your vehicle. Some of those, I believe, are probably private homes. So for short local trips, a char car can be charged at home with an electrical outlet. Um, now the thing with that is, is that you have to contact CFE um, and have them oversee the installation of a specific um, meter in your home. So you have to hire an electrical person to come and install the electrical charging station and CFE will oversee this and they will hook it up. But basically what it is is that your car will be charged on a separate um, circuit from the rest of your household electricity and it is charged a whole lot less as an incentive to use electric vehicles. So you do have to install one of these special um, charging outlets um, in your garage or wherever it is that you plan on charging it. And, and it will be billed separately by CFE. So you have to coordinate with them. So at this point, I'm not sure that they know a whole specifically what exactly the range is gonna be, but one article that I read claims that cars will have a range of about 120 kilometers per charge um, with a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Of course, that depends on your driving habits, uh, whether it's stop and go, whether you're driving up and down hills, etc. cetera. So um, the numbers are kind of goals, kind of estimates on what, what they're planning. Um, but definitely it can be used around town um, to go shopping and um, go for errands or whatever and, and go for small trips out and about. Um, if you plan it so that you could go to a charging station and charge it, well, you could go someplace further and go have a meal and charge it while you're there. So on your a standard household outlet, it's supposed to take about six to eight hours. Um, but um, a lot of the charging stations that are available 
publicly are actually Tesla stations, and those are much faster charging. So it's reported that Zacua, the other electric vehicle that's um, currently produced in Mexico, is um, planning to gradually open up about 150 more charging stations around Mexico City. So far, there's nothing been announced regarding initiatives to provide renewable energy to fuel vehicles like solar. Um, but if you have solar at your home, of course, that would, that would work. Cost of electricity here is rising rapidly. So um, since the sun is so abundant here, not today, <laughs> but in general, the sun is very abundant here and solar panels are extremely popular and getting more so all the time. It's on a rapid timeline, so uh, if it's gonna be ready for the World Cup next year, I think you know once it gets through the design phase and starts getting really worked on, we're gonna start seeing a whole lot more being released. But. Anyway, it's fun to watch. I'm really excited for Mexico, and I hope this was fun for you too. I will see you in the next episode. I know that my audience mostly really wants to see what it's like to live here at Lake Chapala and what it's like to live in Mexico, but these are things that, you know, I live here now, and these are things that I find really exciting that are going on in Mexico right now. So I thought I'd share that and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.